What's up guys, Charles from 3 Tanks Dev and thanks for joining me in this video whereby I'll be doing something that I haven't done in a long time an unboxing video of the Samsung Galaxy S10 this is the Prism Green 120 gigabytes of storage so let's check out what's in the box So basically on the back of the box, it has a 6.1 inch display. This is the S10, this is not the S10 Plus. It has a Quad HD Plus Dynamic AMOLED with 16 million colors. It has a main camera of 12 megapixels f 1.5 and 2.4. It has the ultra wide angle lens which is 16 megapixels f 2.2 and the telephoto lens which is 12 megapixels OIS with f 2.4. So basically what brought me to buy this Samsung camera samsung phone is that it it has the ultra wide angle camera which is similar to gopro so that's pretty cool that was the main buying point for me for this galaxy s10 selfie camera is actually 10 megapixels f 1.9 which is better than the uh, iphone xs it has fingerprint recognition it has 128 gigabytes of storage 8 gigabytes of ram stereo speakers uh, wireless charging ip68 water and dust resistant so not many phones on the market right now can better the specs of this samsung galaxy s10 so pretty cool so let's check out what's in the box let's break that seal i've never been a big fan of samsung phones this is my first samsung phone ever just because of the ultra wide angle lens as i mentioned just now so this is what it looks like in the box so I'm supposed to take it out like that looking very very nice looks similar to the Huawei P30 the three cameras on the back there 6.1 inch the selfie cam is at the corner here so it looks very very nice the top here is the sim card slot the lock buttons here the volume rockers are on this side so in terms of size, I have some comparisons before we take a look at what else is inside the box. Over here, I have the iPhone XS, I have the Google Pixel 1, and I have the Google Pixel 3. So all three lined up, you can see that the Samsung is actually slightly taller than the other three cameras. Let's put this side by side here. It's even slightly longer than the Google Pixel 3. This is all how they line up. You can see from the side view more obvious that the S10 is actually slightly larger with its uh, slightly longer. And in terms of thickness, is I think all three are probably about the same thickness. Probably the Pixel 1 is the thickest. Simplicity is the key nowadays. It comes with the charger you have an adapter here, similar to the Google Pixel, a uh, USB to USB Type C adapter, for tr probably for transferring information from another phone. So if the AKG wireless, no, they're, they're not wireless basically. It, they have the AKG uh, earphones. This is the USB Type C cable here, and basically that's it. Never heard of this brand AKG. Interesting that they included it. Maybe some premium Korean uh, headphones brand or something like that. The backing. Keep that. There's no plastic protection on the front, just the back. This is running on Android uh, version 9, which I'm not a fan of, but since. So cool, we got it set up. Let's see what kind of stuff that they have. A lot of Samsung stuff. So let's check out the camera. So yep, this is it. So we're gonna go video. And then I believe this center icon here is the normal. And then this is the times two. And this is the wide angle. So let's take out, check out the field of view. So basically this is the wide angle view 
which looks pretty nice fantastic I'm gonna throw this on the gimbal and do some tests in the upcoming video this is the normal view you can see how much difference that is and it's cool that you can swap in between the different cameras while recording so that's awesome and this is the telephoto lens so just want to give you a glimpse of the screen to body ratio between the four cameras so you can see Samsung definitely has the best screen to body ratio than the other phones okay so right now I'm downstairs just testing out the camera on this on the Samsung S10 this is the normal camera the main camera stabilization seems to be pretty good we're gonna test it out later on but this is the bokeh effect and then we're gonna swap to the wide-angle lens oh. normal lens and doesn't seem to be auto focusing okay so I've just uh, turned on the phone and it's already like overheating it's getting pretty hot so I don't know whether it's normal or not uh, right now I'm shooting on the selfie cam looks pretty good uh, very very nice colors so we're gonna try out the uh, back camera again and take some more photos and videos and test out the super steady uh, mode okay so right now we're testing out the super steady mode I'm not so sure what it is but hopefully something similar to Google's uh, pix the Google Pixel's pretty sick EIS so right now we're trying it out it seems to be very very strong and somewhat similar to the Pixel 3's uh, EIS just right off the bat okay so right now we are in normal mode without the super steady mode on just to test out what's the difference, how different it is with the super steady mode on. Uh, in between, we can always change cameras, so that's pretty cool. Now I'm swapping to the wide angle lens, and then we can swap over to the telephoto lens. <coughs> that's a little bit of OIS, I guess. And then back to the normal camera one thing I didn't notice if you do put super steady mode on you can't use any other camera you, besides the normal uh, wide-angle camera you can't change it to the telephoto lens or the ultra wide-angle lens so that's uh, so that's a pretty much a downside I guess you can use the ultra wide angle lens to shoot the super steady mode video Just testing out the uh, auto exposure mode. Let's see whether there's any pulsing or not. Same for the Galaxy S10, just testing out the auto exposure mode.
checking out the colors of the sky. iPhone XS does a really, really good job, I guess. So that's the Samsung looking really, really nice as well. Yep, so you got the options below here. At the bottom of my thumb is the ultra wide angle lens, the wide angle and telephoto. But when you put on the super steady mode, you lose all that options and you can only shoot the rear camera in 1080p at 60 frames per second. That's about it. You can't use the 4K 60 frames. And so, yeah, basically that's some of the uh, limitations that we have when we use that super steady mode. Another bad thing that I notice is if you shoot at 60 frames per second, whether it's 1080p or 4K 60 frames per second, you lose this wide angle and telephoto options and you can see here I'm swapping in between this is at uh, 4k 30 frames per second but if I were to shift it to 60 frames per second for example 4k 60 that functionality is lost even in 1080p 60 frames per second you can't get to the extra wide angle the ultra wide angle functionality which is pretty annoying because I shoot most of my videos in 60 frames per second so that's something that I'm really not happy with. So 1080p, 30 frames, you have the option to shoot in ultra wide angle, same as 4K, 30 frames per second, you get that functionality. The moment you swap to 60 frames, you lose that functionality, so that's pretty annoying. In photo mode, it's fine. And swap at any time. One thing good about the selfie camera, the selfie camera for videos, you the front face video, you can shoot at 4K, so that's pretty good. Something that the iPhone XS cannot do. Uh, 4K 30 frames per second on the front camera or 1080p. And then the reason I bought this this phone is that it shoots 4K 60 frames per second and can, has the ultra wide angle lens. But now after buying this, I realized that you cannot shoot ultra wide angle like the GoPro can. The GoPro Hero 7 can shoot, uh, I mean, it's naturally wide angle, but you can't shoot 4K 60. So that's pretty, pretty annoying. Oh, cool, they even have a hyperlapse option something which I did not know, hyperlapsing. In a photo selfie mode, one thing that is good is that you do have the slightly ultra wide angle lens as well, only in photo mode. Um, if, if you're taking selfies, you can actually switch to the wide angle mode so you can capture more of the background. Uh, in video mode, unfortunately, you cannot use the ultra wide angle lens on the front camera. So yeah, that's, that's pretty, annoying as well so there are some limitations that you can see which are not too pleasing so this is 4k 30 that's why you got the option yep so that was it guys just a pretty simple unboxing video and a look at the wide angle camera which I basically just bought this phone just because of the wide angle camera so we're gonna do some tests in the upcoming videos on the Samsung S10 against the iPhone XS and the Google Pixel 1 and 3 so stay tuned for that give me a thumbs up if you like this video leave your comments below and I'll see you in the next one peace